Let's turn to exploring the Shema discussions on the issues of Trinity and pick up where we left off a few weeks back. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, which is appropriate given the fact that we're in the season of counting the Omer, which is the connecting point from Passover to Pentecost. In case you didn't know it, God intended for us to understand that Passover is connected and tied to Pentecost. And this is done via the counting the days that um, lie between the season of Passover and the giving of um, the law and the giving of the Spirit at Pentecost or Shavuot. And so it's 49 days, and then when we reach the 50th day, we have the celebration of Shavuot. And we're right around the corner. We're, we're in the final stretch, right? We've got a, about a week left. At the time of this recording, we've got about a week left until Pentecost or Shavuot. And um, just letting you know in advance, we're not going to have a, a, a Bible study that uh, next weekend, but I encourage you to uh, plug into a local congregation if you've got one that's teaching uh, the truths of Pentecost. Many Christian churches are still studying Pentecost, which is great. After all, it is supposedly the birthday of the church, right? Um, even though I don't hold to that truth. But there's a lot of a relevancy to studying the festival of Pentecost because not only is it the celebration of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we're, and we're studying the Holy Spirit in these studies, but from my perspective as a Messianic Jew, it is the commemoration of the giving of the Torah at Sinai according to the the, the uh, timetable and the reckoning uh, by Rabbinic Judaism, which I think is accurate here, um, the giving of the law at Sinai. So we have the giving of the words of God along with the giving of the Spirit of God, and that those two make a very nice pair. So let's talk about this Holy Spirit. Um, we've been looking at um, uh, this... Um, idea of Unitarian perspectives on the Holy Spirit. It's no secret that Unitarians do not embrace a Trinitarian God, a tripersonal God, one being who expresses himself and uh, relates to us in three persons. Unitarians embrace a single God, a monotheistic God, however, without the three persons aspect. And so when it comes to the Spirit, most Unitarians are going to embrace a Holy Spirit model that is similar to a rabbinic Jewish model, which is either the Spirit of God is very God himself, or the Spirit of God is an emanation or a power or a, a gift from God, something that can be um, imparted to humans, but, uh, but in fact it's just one God. There's no second or third person uh, that we need to contend with. So these are my own thoughts. Uh, we just got through quoting um, some, I think it was Unitarian uh biblicalunitarian.org or something like that. So um, let's see. Let's continue with my own thoughts here. So in direct response and challenge, these are my own words, to the Unitarian denial of Trinitarian concepts vis-a-vis, -vis, that is, as it pertains to the Holy Spirit, standard orthodox with a small o Trinitarian Christian literature affirms the notion that the one true God does in fact subsist in three persons and that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. So there's our challenge. And I might add to that, uh, even though I don't state it right here, does the Bible support that view? Well, we're going to find, let me interject, when we're studying the Trinitarian concepts and the models and all of the explanations for how we understand God, most of us are uh, biblical Unitarians and biblical Trinitarians. Most of us are going to agree that um, God is the fountain point, the fountainhead, the focal point, the kind of the, the source of our understanding of God so that the Father is the um, one who sends Yeshua or the Father, whether you believe that Jesus is is very God or just a, a God man, it doesn't matter. God the Father is still the one who is in control. In that in that same model, Yeshua plays that secondary role, that that um, subservient role, um, submissive role to the Father. No matter if you're a Unitarian or a Trinitarian, Yeshua still plays that role where he submits to the Father, his will, will yields to the Father. And in doing so, we end up with uh, models that allow for um, uh, Yeshua to have preeminence as God's Messiah, right? The Messiah chosen by God. But at the same time, he doesn't have to be the Messiah who is equal to God 
in um in power and majesty and very deity right that's the unitarian perspective it's also uh some forms of um other christian like i talk about christadelphians iglesia ni cristo uh jehovah's witnesses um oneness pentecostals and things like that but then when we get to the holy spirit something actually unique happens 